just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only hurting. Me and I and myself. <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's beyond the body, and it's uh, a beautiful day here in Mexico. And uh, I'm. I want to look up at the, the the faces, but I'm supposed to look at the camera so that you feel like we're having this one-on-one -on -one experience. So. Anyway, I don't know who's here, but I'm glad you are. Um, today is a special show. We're going to be talking about cascading miracles. And this is something I used, I was saying for a while until um, uh, one of my community members and I had a talk about it. I used to say I'm in the middle of a giant miracle. And <clears throat> that's not completely accurate because the really what's happening is the miracles are cascading like a waterfall. Um, they don't end. They just keep falling. Like, and, and that leads me into a beautiful quote that I found that kind of really says a lot about what today's program is in, in the text. Um, and I didn't put down where I got it from, but I think it's in the workbook. Um, it's the, what is a miracle? Miracles fall like drops of healing rain from heaven on a dry and dusty world where starved and thirsty creatures come to die. Now they have water. Now the world is green and everywhere the signs of life spring up to show that what is born can never die and what has life has immortality. And I think that really speaks to today's program. Um, if you, any of you have not seen the first um, Beyond the Body segment, I highly recommend you go to the, uh, the link that will be provided by Alexa um, that has all the programs from the first, first set of shows. Because Lila Stenberg, a, an angel friend of all, um, was on that program and... Um, well, it, it's a program in and of itself. And since that program, she has laid down her skin suit and, and stepped off into the, the white light in God's, what did she say, in a blaze of, of glory into God, Father, her father's heaven. So um, what I have today are two, two other people that were really touched by Lila. And we're going to share the cascading miracles that have come from... In the world at large, um, grief is a funny thing and not seen as something positive. And what I've gotten from this whole process with Lila, and I'm, I'll cry, <laughs> but it's a positive thing. These are tears of miracles on a otherwise dusty and dry something. <laughs> anyway, um, so the miracle today is uh, my two friends is Micah and Craig Villarubia. Um, Micah is in Hawaii and Craig is in Los Angeles. So we're having kind of a, a global event happening here. And um, I'm going to start with them and we're just going to share, share the grace that, Ly that Lila is. Because uh, I don't even see her as not being here, quite frankly. I see her everywhere and in everything. So, Micah, are you there? Oh, there you are. Hi, honey. <laughs> um, if you'd like to just share, um, yeah, we've shared so much. And uh, I just know that you've had some pretty amazing things come out of this whole process. And so I can't wait to hear your side of the, the ocean. Hi. It's very early here still. <laughs> it's fun. Fuck, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, I don't even know where to start. This this whole journey has been so amazing, and um, 
Yeah, I'm just thinking about what, what you and I shared, Calico, and it's so much that seriously, I don't even know where to start. But um, what, I, what I do feel very strongly now is I, I woke up and it was early and, um, and I, I was <laughs> a little shaky and I felt, I felt a lot of emotions coming up. And that is one of the things that we talked about that um, I, I had a hard time after Lila's passing to feel her everywhere because every, everyone was saying, oh, I feel Lila so much now. She's everywhere and she's not contained in a body anymore. And I feel her and I didn't because I, you know, I was just going through all these emotions. I was sleeping on the hospital floor next to her when it when she passed and and I woke up and she wasn't there anymore and and you know it's I went through all that form stuff and I couldn't just switch to oh now she's everywhere but I but everyone um seemed to feel it so I was so afraid to to lose her you know what I mean and um uh yeah, and, and, and then I, I started to realize that um, that I was not to spiritualize all these emotions because they're there too and, 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 and just let them be there and let them out and let them go and invite Lila to go through it with me. And, and that's been really helpful. That's and, beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful because yeah. I know we had talked about that as far as, you know, it's Lila is ever present, just like Holy Spirit is. Um, but there needs to be an invitation. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like I know for myself, it's like anywhere I am, I can invite Lila in just like I can invite Holy Spirit in. And boy, I tell you, it's been a profound process because she's always there. I mean, I had a, an event with a flower the other day that, you know, was Lila. And it was, and it was clearly on the invitation on my part. And I know that we've been talking about that, um, that process. Now, you also scattered her ashes. And I know this was kind of, there was a lot of stuff going on with the cremation and the scattering. Would you like yeah. to share about that at all? Yeah, 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 for sure. So, um so that's another thing that that hit me and it hit you too right when when we heard that when we knew it was the day of the cremation um even though we were so in the light with her and we felt her everywhere just the knowing that the body was going to be cremated just really hit me and and i hadn't seen her body after we left her at the hospital so it was not like we were with her body the whole time at all because she didn't care about the body so we didn't really care about it, but just the knowing that, oh, this is the next step. Now the body is not even going to be there. And then the next day, Craig comes home because I was staying with Craig. And he brought this bag of ashes. <laughs> and we were looking at it like, whoa, this is amazing. I mean, wh what the hell is this stuff? It is so <laughs> weird. And... Um, and then the, the, all the miracles that happened um, around that scattering, because we, we planned to do that on a Friday with some people. But then the island here started erupting. <laughs> Which I just want to say, didn't, what did Lila say? She wanted, she had wrote, wrote out yeah, that. She, she that, said, uh, I ascended in a blaze of glory. Right. <laughs> well, she did. And you know, the whole island started erupting with her. So, and, and that's another cool thing because um, the eruptions that are happening now, they've been comparing those to the ones in 1955, which is Lila's birth year. So <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> And then, and then, so the, the eruptions are happening in Leilani Estates, which is like Lila. <laughs> yeah, so that's crazy. So we weren't even able to go down to the place where she wanted to be scattered um, because of the eruptions. And then I tried it again a few days later and I just you know I just took the ashes put her next to me in the in the passenger seat <laughs> went for a road trip with her and then like 10 minutes on the road I see a hitchhiker and I picked him up 
And, and, and right when I picked him up or I stopped for him, I thought, oh, my God, what did I do? It looked like a homeless person. And I was like, shit, oh, my God. But I decided, okay, I'm meeting myself. This is myself, too. So he was sitting next to me and he was talking. And then it turned out that he actually lived in that area. And I was afraid that they would only let residents in. So he was my golden ticket into that area. So I was like, yes, okay, this is Lila's plan now. And uh, and yeah, then we scattered it and that was beautiful and weird too, because what do you do? I mean, like, I know that, well, you you even said Lila couldn't have cared less if we scattered her in a parking lot, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not that she really cared. And I know that all of it, all of it is more for us. Yeah. For, uh, totally for us. And, and even, um, me finding her in her apartment and calling the ambulance and taking her to the hospital, I realized that that was for me and it was not for her because I know that she would have been totally fine dying seemingly on her own uh, in on her living room floor in, yeah, in her apartment. But and it no, she was alone we know no, she, wasn't she, she alone. knew all the time she wasn't alone you know even a week before that when I when I left her I said please call me I'll come back if you need me please call me I knew she wouldn't call me because she didn't need anything yeah but when I came back and I found her um uh and I took her to the hospital I know that was for me because it was it was a way gentler it was a gentler way for me to to see her go and be with her instead of just finding her on the floor, right? So I'm really grateful for that, that she let that happen. Because it, for me, that was a beautiful ending of the whole process. You know, I'm just going to jump in because that was the, 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 the day that she was cremated was kind of a big day for me. I, I was fine. I, I really went through a very quick grief process for an afternoon, went to the lake, and I saw Lila and the birds, and she was everywhere. And then when you said she was being cremated, there was, I was hit by emotions again. Mm -hmm. And it was really this letting go of form. It, there was something so real about it. But then I started <clears throat> listening to Holy Spirit. And, you know, I never had the pleasure of meeting Lila in form. We had a relationship online and it was like, I mean, I had like an hour and a half a Skype call with her once. I had the pleasure of eye gazing via Skype and it was one of the most profound experiences of my life. So I never knew her in form and you actually mentioned that you went out one night with her scarf and it smelled like Lila and I went into some emotional thing of like, I don't know what Lila smells like. It's like that pissed me off. Excuse me. That upset me greatly. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know what Lila smells like. But it was like that wasn't my relationship to her in form. My relationship with Lila really was in mind. And it was a profound, probably one of the closest relationships I've ever had was with Lila. And it was like, and I never met her. <laughs> so when I heard she had been cremated, there was this, oh, I won't have that opportunity anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I must say, I did go through a process of clearing that too. Listen, I want to get Craig in here. Um, half an hour is not long enough for this show. So Craig, are you there? Yes, I see you. Hi, Craig. I am. How are you? <laughs> Craig also, Craig Villarubia is a very close friend of Lila's also, and I use it in the present tense because I really don't feel like she's gone anywhere. But please share your experience of this process and anything that feels on your heart to share. Yeah, thank you. Um, wow, yeah. Um, I think, you know, for me, um, this whole process and, and continued process is about um, – allowing the doubt to be dissolved, the doubt in, um, I think I wouldn't be on this process of healing or awakening if I, if there wasn't a seeming doubt of reality and its existence and, and the truth. And there's a lot of things that, um, 
I know I've talked about intellectually understanding, but didn't necessarily have a um, experiential understanding. And I think this whole thing with what Lila's uh, experience has offered me, as well as like many teachers, is um, their conviction. And um, Lila's conviction in what was true um, helped me with whatever doubt that I have and my fears of death to be able to witness um, her fearlessness towards death, her conviction in um, eternity, her conviction in, in, in eternal life um, has drawn me in. It drew me in and it does draw, it dry, you know, this morning I woke up and I felt a little pain in my chest and I felt like the body thought of, oh my God, what's, what, what's that? And immediately she came to mind. <laughs> so she, she is with me still. And when, um, in, 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 in the same way, um, other teachers and Jesus is with me in that, um, the whole mind training is being supported by these beautiful symbols and being reflected, um, by these, these people who have seemed to go ahead of me and show me the way. And I told this to Lila even before she passed that I felt like um, she was kind of leading the way for, for me, but really for, for all in, 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 a, in looking at death the way that she saw it, which she didn't really see it, um, in sharing the painlessness of her experience. She, 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 she brought home the point to me that there was no pain. Oh my God. Like, and, and with that level of conviction, it's just the relief, you know, miracles being an expression of love. I felt that love, that unconditional um, viewpoint. And um, I just want to jump in on this, Craig, because this is a really important thing. This whole idea of pain, fear of pain. And I, you know, coming from a medical model, as a doctor, liver cancer is known to be one of the most brutal cancers you can get, filled with lots of pain. And this is one thing, Lila and I talked about this a lot. It's like staying in the moment, there's no pain. You cannot have pain in this moment. As long as you're in the moment, if you go into the past or you jump to the future, pain will be expressed quite quickly because it's the fear of pain coming or the fear of pain that we've known to have in the past. We actually talked quite a bit about this because she had no pain, none. And that is profound, really. Yeah, I just yeah. had to jump in when you said that. <laughs> no, I think that's, that's, that's beautiful. And I think that's what... Um what was demonstrated her capacity or, or the ability or the experience or the result of mind training I, I don't know but what was demonstrated is is such a level of um steadfast attention in spirit that doesn't allow for the attachment to um or the ownership of pain and i i i know i mean i think a lot of us know what it feels like to fear pain um, uh, I often, I often refer to myself as a chicken when it comes to the doctor and, and not one, but, but I also could see the, um, there's like a stickiness to it and a stickiness to the pain that, um, Lila didn't seem to have. So, wow, I got to witness the possibility to, um, that it is possible to not take ownership or label or, um, see oneself at the effect of of that perception of pain and 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 that's priceless for me and it's um it's just a testament uh to to the mind training and, and the whole forgiveness process um so yeah absolutely i mean pain yes pain is and yes pain is is certainly a scary thing and <laughs> I, I mean again you know when you know, like this morning when I woke up and I felt that that little chest pain, and there was Lila's like, oh, wait, you know, you know, where's my attention on the body? OK, so, you know, how do I open myself up to the miracle? Oh, call call in spirit, be willing to, to be wrong, 
right. about what I just judged that feeling, like be wrong that um, it's mine. Um, am I willing to do that? And um, Lila, the thought of Lila came in and certainly um, I'm sure I walk, I continue to welcome it. And I'm sure it'll, it'll come whenever is needed. Yeah. That's beautiful, Craig. I, I just thank you because I know you've had a, a rather, as far as chronological time, you've, you've seen Lila progress through this whole process. And I call it grace. I mean, some other people may call it death, but she was a state of grace. And it was, um, I know that you, you spent a lot of time with her. And I must say, on some level, there's a little bit of an expression session here. Um, I'm jealous that you had that time with Lila in flesh. And it's like, um, yeah. And yet I have it now through you and Micah. And, and uh, you know, I feel like I knew her as well as anyone can know somebody. And, uh, and she shared with such openness about everything i mean she, there was nothing hidden ever she held nothing back and uh and it was really a joy her joy in every moment no matter what her body might have been going through and i don't know because she never talked we talked about staying in the moment because i did talk to her a lot about pain and she said no it's a moment by moment you have to stay very vertical <clears throat> and that's the practice you know, that's a course in miracles right there. It's like how to stay vertical, how to stay out of the future and away from the past. It's like what's going on. I love what you said, you know, owning the body. You know, it's like, oh, I have a little pain in my chest. It's like, yeah, why, why would you want to own that? <laughs> it's like maybe want to rethink that with Holy Spirit and, uh, and move beyond that particular issue. Um, is there anything you can say about your grief process as far as the actual passing of the form? Um, um, there, 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 there was maybe a moment where the temptation of, um, I mean, there was like a moment of the temptation of, of, of sadness, but it wasn't. I, I, you know, I, I think that it, it was a, a whole miracle for me in the sense that I, and it's weird because it, there's a part of the mind that wants to judge it as cold, but I never felt grief because I don't feel like she ever, like, I, I mean, I remember going to the hospital room, seeing the dead body and it just was it didn't resonate as, um, like, it doesn't even, like, I'm not even like associated with the with with Lila it doesn't like it doesn't um and like Micah was saying about like when we're looking at the ashes it was just like there's no association it's just not none whatsoever and um it was nothing was a surprise I mean we all knew I mean all of all the all of our bodies will be laid to rest but um with Lila you know it seemed like we had a timeline and um we knew so there was no surprise and you know I talked about death with Lila and again, her conviction, her, in the conversation, there was never sadness. There was never, I mean, we might as well have been planning. I mean, we were planning a party. I mean, I, we talked about like, you know, oh yeah, you know, when you clean the apartment, you know, have a pizza party. I mean, it, it was planning a party and, 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 you know, I, and, you know, the lesson is really deep, but it's not serious. And um, uh, that's how I felt our conversations were. They were very deep, and but not serious in a way that there was concern about anything. Again, because the level of conviction was so high in, in, in Lila, um, that left no room for, um, you know, suffering or, or sadness or, or any, it, there was no question. There was no questioning of it. It was just, um, just love, just unconditional yeah. love. Yeah, totally. And, you know, I had a, because a, my, my experience with Lila was virtual, really, um, since I never had that form content. It's funny. Now it's, maybe it's a good thing I don't have her smell or a sense of her body because she lives in my head. She is just alive in my head 
as she was prior to her letting her form go. It's a very interesting phenomenon <laughs> that I appear to be going through with this one. And um, I think it is what Jesus is, what, Jesus hasn't gone anywhere, you know? I mean, really? Is Jesus in your mind? Well, then Jesus is very much alive. And that's kind of the way I feel Lila is with me. And, and you know, you keep using the word conviction. It's like, yeah, as far as she was concerned, she wasn't going anywhere. You know, where am I going? <laughs> it's like, oh, right. We're not going anywhere because she's right here. She's, well, I point to my head and I don't, can't even do that. <laughs> She's in mind. She's in the, the mind of, of God, which is in all of us. So, yeah. I thank you so much for sharing. I, I, I feel very close to you. And like I said, you're, you're as virtual as Lila and Micah. And it's just an interesting relationship that I seem to have formed in a very short period of time. <laughs> so thank you for sharing. And uh do either of you have any final words that you'd like to pass along? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what you guys just were talking about, her conviction and her trust, that, that is something that really, really affected me. And, and, and many people around her. I still hear some people, I, I still meet people that, um, that tell me, oh, I just got to meet her like quickly or I, I saw her for an hour and and it affected me and um, um, it affected me too just being around someone so close that had so much trust in this whole process how can I ever not trust anymore right it, it, it feels like impossible you know, and I'm just going to kind of give a, a little plug in this whole I concept of trust because we do have an online retreat at the end of this month with the development of trust. And I need to say, this is a huge, this is what A Course in Miracles is about, developing trust in something that is not of form. And uh, so I just invite everyone to to look into joining us in the, the online retreat the, at the 28th, I think, of, of May, because we're gonna, the whole retreat is gonna be spent on the development of trust. And I must say, I, re, I copied that section of the book out and read it so many times, over and over, and most of the time it made no sense to me, but it's now getting clearer and clearer, and it's as seeing living, examples of of trust walking trust and so i thank you for sharing that mike it really it yeah it speaks to me greatly mm -hmm. um i think we're coming up on the 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 tail end of our program here and uh i just i was looking through the course because i keep bringing lila back to the course just because she was so present for me in the teachings of jesus um she was, in my world, a master teacher. And um, I came across Lesson 132, and it just feels like, um, yeah, this, this speaks to me of Lila. Lesson 132, um, just, a, just a sentence. The, the sick are healed as you let go all thoughts of sickness, and the dead arise when you let thoughts of life replace all thoughts you ever held of death. And I think that's what this whole program really is about. It's beyond the body. And uh, we have to see that we're making this stuff up in our minds. And as long as we continue to think thoughts of sadness or loss or grief, we will continue to experience sadness, loss, and grief. Because as we think, we project. So... With that one last line, because this is beyond the body, communion is another kind of completion, which goes beyond guilt because it goes beyond the body. So thank you, Craig and Micah. Oh, I love you guys so much. And all of you for, for participating. Have a great moment. <laughs> love you. Love you. <laughs> it was just a tiny mad idea. 
Go.